All right, first and foremost, I want to say all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his name of his Son, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the elders and apostles of Grimmel Stone, and salutations to all the brothers, especially this work in all sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Yahweh, here once again with another lesson, professing the words of the Heavenly Father to the best of my abilities. All right, we're going to start this off with Luke chapter 8, verse 4. And when much people were gathered together, and were come to him out of every city, he speak by a parable. Right? Now let's look at the word parable. The word parable. A parable. Section B. Right, a parable, an earthly story with an heavenly meaning. Right, basically, you can describe it as a dark saying or as a proverb. Right, something not meant to be easily understood, so that you can understand. Right, so that what that's what a parable is. So, scripture says that he spoke by a parable. The parable was this, that a saw went out to sow a seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it, and some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up with it, and choked it, and other fell on ground, on good ground, and sprung up, and bear fruit and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that had an ear, that had ears, let him hear. And his, and, he, and, and, and his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? So, and he said, un, And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to the others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not hear. And basically this is showing you that the Heavenly Father is biased. Right? There are some who will understand, and there are others who will not. Right? When you read the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 7, it says, What then? Israel had not obtained that which he seek it for. But the election had obtained it because you have Israelites who are seeking for something. The scripture tells you that um, the children of Israel have a zeal but not according to knowledge. Right? You have Israelites. Israelites are very spiritual people. So they are always seeking for some form of higher being, a higher entity. Right? But a lot of them are in the ways of um, Egyptologists. They are in the ways of um, Christianity. They are in the ways of being Muslims and many other form of religion, right? So the scripture says, What then Israel had not obtained that which he seek it for, but the election had obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So there is a few, a very minute amount of people who have obtained the truth, and the rest were blinded, right? So when you tell in the scriptures tells they say, Yo, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Who unto who? That who is talking about the election, those who are selected to, to have the understanding. You understand? But to the others in parables that seeing they might not see. So they are seeing the words, they are seeing what is happening, they are seeing the, the times that are coming to pass. Right? They see the prophets out there, but they are not seeing literally. They cannot understand, they cannot comprehend or grasp the concept of what is happening right now, the magnitude of what is happening right now. Right? So continuing says, No, the parable is this. The seed is the word. So the seed is the word. Right? And the sowers, the sower, the ultimate sower is basically the Heavenly Father, but the sowers are those are the laborers, the prophets that are out there, right? That are throwing the word out there. Right? So those by the wayside are they that hear. Then commit the devil and take it away the word out of their 
hearts. At least they should believe and be saved. So there are people who come up to camps and who hear the videos, right? And they hear the word. And the word basically resonates with them. They start to have a certain certain understanding. But then comes the devil, the deceiver, right? Before the word take root, right? The deceiver comes and basically take it away the word out of their hearts, which means take away the word out of their mind. Understand? So at least they should believe and be saved. Right? So those are the ones by the wayside. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root which for a bit, for a while believe and in a time of temptation fall away. So these are the ones who believe. Right? But over a period of time them fall away because they have no root. They don't have that, that vigor, that fervent fire to basically cause the word to grow into something more than just a belief, to cause the word to grow into something of action, right, of passion. When you hear the word, it, it causes you to resonate and to change and to go forth, do lessons, to blossom and to grow more and abound, right? So those are the ones that they don't have root. Right? So when temptation, the time of temptation comes, the time of trial and difficulty comes, the word, the word is not within them. They cannot, they cannot, the scripture tells you, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. Right? And fear of Lord thy treasure. They won't be stable because the word has not taken root. They don't, they know, they don't know the breakdowns. They can't explain um, much spiritual, spirituality about the doctrine. They can't explain the doctrine, so to speak. Right? So the word has not taken root. Therefore, when the, tem when the tempter come, when the trials and tribulation come, they fall away. Right? And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to the perfection. But that on good ground are they which in the which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with patience no man when he had lit a candle right no man when he had lighted a candle put it it under a bed but set it it upon a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light right so this is the good ground. When you, when you plant a seed upon the good ground, it's supposed to abound. It's supposed to grow and bring forth plentiful. Right? So the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. Right? The scripture tells you in the book of Hebrews that you're supposed to keep the word of the Heavenly Father. At least it should slip. Right? I think it's the book of Hebrew. Let me see. Hebrew, Hebrews, chapter, I think it's chapter 2, you know, All right, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, it said, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, at least at any time we should let them slip. Right? At least at any time we should let them slip. So we those are the ones that keep the word. That has the word basically being rooted. That take it root and the word spring forth and bring forth more fruit. So no man lighted a candle. The candle is basically the word. You see? And cover it up on a bushel. So you're supposed to abound in the truth. You're supposed to manifest the works. That, you have, that um, The work that has been given to you by the Heavenly Father. When you read the book of Philippians chapter Philippians chapter chapter nine one verse nineteen, this is what this was a letter to the to the people of Philippi, the Philippians. And Paul was saying to them this. Paul said this to them in verse nineteen, say for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Yahushai. 
according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Yahusha shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. So Paul was not ashamed of the work that he was doing in Yahushai, but he did the work in boldness so that all the work may be magnified, right? That Yahushai shall be magnified through his labor, right? So Paul continues and says, For to me to live is Yahushai and to die is gain. Because Paul was in the twixt two straits. He was in the need to basically profess the word of Yahushai, to manifest the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But there was another need, which is, was basically to, to flee from the afflictions of this life, which was the true death, right? Continues, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I, I would not, right? So Paul could not choose. He cannot choose whether he should live in the flesh. Are to die so so basically the fruit of his labor to live in the flesh was to basically profess the word of the Heavenly Father continue in verse 23 for I am in straight in a street betwixt two having a desire to depart and to be with Yahweh Shai which is far better nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you and having this confidence I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Yahweh Shai for me by my coming to you again so the, he was he was basically saying that their their joy in Yahweh Shai should be more abundant because of the work that he is doing so we likewise know as prophets and ambassadors of the Heavenly Father it's more needful for us to be present in order to spread the word, which is that seed, right? To bring forth more fruit to, 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 to Yahweh Shai, right? When you read 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Yahweh Shai, who shall judge the quick and the dead at it is appearing and his kingdom Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, rep reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own loss shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn, uh, turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But what? Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, right? Make full proof of the ministry, manifest the word of the Heavenly Father, continue to be a scarlet, the, the, um, put your candle upon, upon that mountain, so to speak. Let your light so shine before men, you understand? Always manifesting the word, yo, right? For I, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. So Paul was in a state where he was ready to be, to be a scully, leave the earth, leave this present, present plane of life. Because at one point he knew his purpose was to manifest the word of the Heavenly Father. And in this chapter right here, it tells you that his work was fulfilled. Right? So we likewise have to tread that course of manifesting the word of the Heavenly Father. Knowing that it is more needful to be alive right now and to push the word of the Heavenly Father in all its necessity, is its necessity for to live is your shy, right? And after your death, you suppose your words are your, the, the words of your shy is supposed to live on through all those that you have taught before, right? That your words, the words of your Hawabashi may abound through the fruits that you have gathered, right? So with that, hope that this lesson was edifying unto the elect of the Heavenly Father. I want to say, Kalalal, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Akhar, Kadash. The bonus to the elders and apostles of Grimstone and salutations to all the brothers pushing this work in our sincerity and in truth. Shalom.